I promised you a Q&A video answering all the questions that you guys had sent in on both my Empire Toy Works Facebook page and Instagram. Everything from toys, toy collecting, toy customizing, making dioramas and play sets, uh, customizing vehicles, and mainly what led up to me making this monstrosity, Rocket Station. This is the beast that started it all for me to have a career as a custom toy maker, and I have a lot to tell you. I won't be able to cram it all into just one video, so more than likely this will be an ongoing series. Let's get started. So the first question I have here is, what are you wearing right now? Call me Daddy. Well, Daddy, I'm wearing my Waylon Utani shirt, along with my limited edition Mandalorian high tops. And that's it. So what's the history behind Rock Gut Station? Well, about eight years ago, I decided to tackle a long-time dream to create a large-scale playset. Not just something simply for display, but an actual functional hands-on playset. Basically a dollhouse for a middle-aged nerd. I had this drunken epiphany of a place that was an urban stew of Blade Runner, Fifth Element, Borderlands, and Deadwood. I had no idea how big it would actually end up being, but I wanted it to basically build itself, one building at a time. I never drew plans or even concept sketches. I just created a series of unique structures to see how they might fit together. I treated its design like that of a shopping mall map, hit the large anchor stores first and then fill in the gaps with smaller buildings. Originally it was just going to be a small settlement with maybe one landing platform and a few structures. But then it grew. A motel, a bar, a med center, then a control tower, repair shops, retail stores, eateries. It grew up and it grew out. If there was a blank flat surface, I knew I could attach something new. Eventually one landing platform became eight. I realized I could link each section by adding a catwalk and staircases. A single action figure could technically walk to each and every location on the main structure. As more buildings were added, shadows were cast, so lighting was a definite necessity. I used a variety of LED sets to give off an array of lighting effects. As the main structure grew to capacity, it looked more like a standalone art exhibit being surrounded by the room's white walls. I wanted instead to feel immersed by the city and not just looking inside it. I definitely wanted more. I wanted something like a Kowloon walled city wrapping around the center structure. So I built up the walls of the room with countless more venues. These one-sided facades would act as storefronts and apartments, repair bays and inner sanctums. Large illuminated signs were installed. Towers were now mounted to the ceiling like stalactites. I was able to add 30 more landing platforms. I can now dock nearly 50 ships across the entire city complex. My once small settlement had now become a full-size spaceport. A spaceport known as Rocket Station. That gets me every time I watch it. Alright, so... One question that I get from time to time is, are you married? Um, you can't possibly be married. How would your wife let you build all of this? And um, yes, I am married. I've been married for 22 years, and we have been together for uh, 28 years. Uh, we got together in 91. Um, and from the get-go, she knew right from the start that I was into toys. It was a, um, a major hobby of mine, uh, collecting. Kind of uh, Back then, I was sort of dabbling in uh, customizing um, some small dioramas, some uh, customizing of figures, things like that, but uh, nowhere near what I'm doing now. Um, little did she know that you know, I would eventually build a city in our future home, but 
uh, here it is. And honestly, it's um, never been a problem. She hasn't um, had any issues with all of this. She knows I'm not going to build something that's going to look like shit. Um, I put a lot of effort into it, and one of the major reasons I built all this was for our kids when they were younger, it gave them a place to uh, come and just have fun. And that's one reason with Rock Gut that I made it so it was um, a bit of accepting of any kind of genre, uh, mostly sci-fi, but it would be something that you could play with uh, Star Wars, Star Trek, uh, aliens, um, anything, anything. And, and that's one thing with, uh, with Rock Gut is that you can basically put anything on it and it kind of fits in um it's sort of interdimensional and that's kind of what i've set up with having so many different toy lines uh, mingled in with it and they're they're all part of the um rot gut community does rot gut exist within one particular universe no, I, I, I don't want it to. I don't want it to strictly be Star Wars. Even though it's heavily inspired by Star Wars and Blade Runner, um, I don't want it to necessarily fall within those parameters. Um, I like it to have its own freedom. I always imagined it as being sort of a gritty galaxy truck stop that travelers from everywhere come through here, refuel, repair, pick up supplies, trade, fight, do whatever they need to do, and then be on their way. Do any of my neighbors know that I have a miniature city inside my house? Uh, no, they don't. Um, I don't really have any immediate neighbors. I live pretty much in the wilderness. It's, um, it's Blade Runner on the inside, and it's the Shire from Lord of the Rings on the outside. Here's a picture of my house. So as you can imagine, I would have very few distractions out here, and it's great. I love it. Um, the great thing is, is that when I do happen to go into the city, I notice every little thing that's attached to a building, everything that's dangling off a ledge, and I'm able to take a lot of those details and use them here on this. So how did I build all this? Well, the entire city complex, along with the surrounding wall structures, are all constructed of wood. I mostly use 5 8 inch thick cabinet grade plywood. The landing platforms are mostly 3 quarter inch thick plywood. Uh, the main reason I used this material was because where I worked it at the time, I had virtually an unlimited supply of it. So this allowed me to uh, cut to length and dimension uh, and construct whatever I needed without having to worry about anything falling apart and sagging. Um, I mean, face it, the entire thing is one big convoluted urban jigsaw puzzle, so I needed that flexibility to be able to build a building and then tack another building onto the side of it and then have another building from there linked to the other one. So I wouldn't have been able to do that with a... Um, a lighter weight material, probably. I know a lot of the online diorama tutorials mention using uh, sheets of foam core, insulation foam. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Most of those uh, of the the rules and tips and tricks that they have listed, uh, all of that can apply to this material also. It's just that this provides you with a bit more structure. It is considerably heavier, though. That's the only kind of give and take of it. But it allows you to build more vertically. And that's what I needed for this. So another question I get is, what happens if you decide to move? And I do not foresee that being a possibility. Um, unless there's a catastrophe of some sort. Um, this is our uh, forever home. Um, we're probably, yeah, we're going to definitely probably die here. And... Um, and that's cool, you know, I got all this. I can die with this. To be continued on the next episode, and be sure to follow Empire Toy Works on both Facebook 
and Instagram.